Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Jeremy Lapidus. Today is Tuesday, October 15th. It is Ranking Tuesday. If you are just tuning in, we just finished going over the first half of our NFL Power Rankings. In this segment, we are going to finish off the NFL Power Rankings, number 16 to 1. But before we do that, remember, if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. You can do the exact same thing with the Super Chat feature on YouTube. Again, you do either of those things, a message should pop up. If you have a burning question about sports, anything at all that you would like to ask, go ahead and throw that in the comments. Throw it in the chat. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. I appreciate everybody so much for sticking around, talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Tuesday, October 15th. But like I was saying, we are going to get back into our NFL power rankings here. Looks like we're still having those issues at number 16. In our NFL power rankings, we have the New York Jets. They get their new receiver, Devontae Adams. Again, this list was made before that trade was happening, but still, I was impressed by the Jets a little bit last game. Their biggest issue in the first five weeks of the season had been their offense. Aaron Rodgers not on the same page with his receivers. He looked solid, completed a Hail Mary. The defense continued to play good, especially in that second half, shutting down the Bills for most of that half. Excuse me. Aaron Rodgers looked really good. That was his best game in a Jets uniform, and now he adds Devontae Adams. This is a team that I think is squarely in the playoff conversation. Andre asks, there's Micah Parsons' trade rumors sparking. Have the Cowboys lost their minds? They're not going to trade Micah Parsons unless they think there's a 0% chance of re-signing him, and then maybe they will. But I don't think Jerry Jones uh, can let go of his pride enough to do that. Uh, we talked about how the Cowboys are number 24 on our list, in case you missed that. But the Cowboys are a bit of a mess. I don't think they're going to trade it. It's the same thing with rumors of Max Crosby being traded. I don't think that's going to happen either. But the NFL has gone crazy today, so anything can happen. I don't expect that to happen, especially with Jerry Jones and his pride at the helm, though. But getting back to the list here. At number 15, it is the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks here have struggled the last couple weeks. They've lost three straight. They probably put up their worst performance in all three of those games last week against those San Francisco 49ers. San Francisco 49ers are a good team, but that was a massive game for the Seahawks. They had to get that game. They had to prove that they were ready to compete with the 49ers for that division, and they were just unable to do that. It's a shame, but still, this is a good Seahawks team, I think. Their defense, once they get healthy, should start playing better. Mike McDonald needs to coach up that defense the way that he was able to do at the beginning of the season. I Granted, against bad teams. But that's just how the Seahawks are going to be. They're going to beat the bad teams, lose to the good teams, I think. We will see if they're able to change that trend coming up throughout the season, though. At number 14, we have the Los Angeles Rams, another team off the bye that went up a fair number of spots because of what's happened around the rest of the world of the NFL. <clears throat> Excuse me. Cooper Cup, rumored to try and make a comeback. He practiced for the first time, I believe, today. Maybe he comes back. That would be a huge get for this Rams team that looked really good in week one with Cooper Cup there. That offense has not been the same without him on the roster. They desperately need their weapons back if they want to make a run at the playoffs in a weak NFC, at least a weak bottom half of the NFC. At number 13, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. They almost lost to the Browns. The Browns, who I think are playing like the worst football team. They can't get anything going offensively. They let the Browns get some momentum going offensively. That is ridiculous. They cannot have that happen. Deshaun Watson, not a good football player. The Eagles, not a good football team right now. I really hate the way that Nick Sirianni is coaching. Obviously, not a hot take there. He is not a great coach yelling at fans after they squeak by with one of, uh, winning against one of the worst teams in football with their full complement of weapons. Not a good look for this team, but they continue to win because they are stacked, because they have Saquon, because they have A.J. Brown, because they have Devonta Smith, because Jalen Hurts is a good quarterback, but I need to see more out of these guys if they want, if they want to hop back into the top 10. 
At number 12, <clears throat> it is the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills, like I said, I liked a lot of what I saw coming out of that game against the Jets. They squeaked by, but that second half was concerning. They got nothing going offensively. Their defense really stepped up. I love what their defense was able to do, but there is a clear weakness. Their run game. Their running defense is awful. Brees Hall was able to run up and down and up and down against this team. And Brees Hall's a good running back, but he's been unable to get that going all season long. They need to figure out how to stop the run. Not an easy task to do, but teams are finding their weakness, and I love the trade for Amari Cooper. I think that pushes them up a little bit. Again, this list was made before any of the breaking news today took place. It was made late last night, but <clears throat> I am a big fan of what they did. They're probably a top 10 team with Amari Cooper. At number 11, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They stand pat at number 11 because everyone in the top 10 won. Basically, everyone in the top 10 won. I was very, very impressed with everyone at the top of the list this week. The Bucks put up 51 points, but the way that they gave up 27 points after going up big is a little concerning. They were able to rebound. They were able to get their, their minds back on. They were able to get their heads screwed back on, but I think they kind of get their foot off the pedal, and when they do that, they give up a lot of points. That's what happened on Thursday night against the Falcons. They got up big. The Falcons made a comeback. It happened against the Saints now. Again, NFC South matchups, they go crazy. Everyone forgets how to play football halfway through the game. But still, not a very great-looking game for their defense, especially in the second quarter. I'm a little concerned about them if they continue to, to give up these big leads. At number 10, it's the Atlanta Falcons. Falcons, a very good football team. They continue to win the games that they are supposed to win. The Falcons and Kirk Cousins continue to get better and better every single week, and that's really what we're looking for here. Can they continue to improve with their new teams? I really do like what they got, that two-headed monster on the ground game, not overusing Bijan Robinson, getting Tyler Algier involved, using their all of their weapons. We got another game with all of their weapons being used, and that is awesome to see. I cannot wait to see how the offense continues to evolve. A new team to the top 10. The biggest, the, the first team that's new in the top 10 today, and the only new team in the top 10, that is the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears, and maybe I'm a little high on them. I understand if you think I'm a little high on them, but Caleb Williams has gotten better every single week. That doesn't seem like something that is going to change. That's not something that seems like it's going to change because they're getting they're get they're getting each of their weapons involved slowly. I really do like this Bears team. That offense is incredible, and Caleb has looked great. VJ Money asks he got offered Baker and Jonathan Taylor for Lamar and Jacobs. You got to take this right. He's following. I that's an interesting one. It depends on the rest of you on how comfortable you are in Baker. I think losing Lamar is going to be a little bit of a question and the way that Jonathan Taylor has been hurt, he's been out for a little while. I don't know when he comes back. You got to check on the injury status. That's a little bit more of a toss up. I don't think it's a certainty. I think I lean more towards the Lamar and Josh Jacobs just cuz Josh Jacobs also a bell cow back and I think Lamar is that much better of a quarterback but I wouldn't be mad about that trade either I think it's pretty fair so if you like Jonathan Taylor that much more than Josh Jacobs go for it continuing our top 10 at number 8 it's the Washington Commanders they get their first loss here since Jaden Daniels burst onto the scene but it's against a really good Ravens team that was a sh that was a shootout. That's what we expected. Jaden Daniels looks awesome. What he's able to do in clutch moments down the stretch in in the red zone, how dangerous he is with his feet, with his arms. When they get a run game going again, once Brian Robinson comes back, that team can compete with anybody. And we saw that when they took the Ravens down to the wire. That was a great game. Maybe <coughs> excuse me. Maybe they improve their defense in the trade deadline, maybe then they could beat this team. At number seven, it's the San Francisco 49ers. They came back with a huge game. The running game continued to be an issue. They potentially lose Jordan Mason for another running back injury. That is a huge blow to them. They need that run game to go. I know 
that they had a solid running back behind him, but I still don't trust it. Not having CMC really makes this offense look different, but Brock Purdy put together his best game, potentially of his career. That was a great game for the 49ers. They have a huge test coming up against the Chiefs this week. This week of football slates is awesome. I cannot wait for it, following a kind of disappointing one. But still, the Niners looked <clears throat> like a complete team for the first time all season long. And that is what we're looking for. That's what we're looking at to see. They're still at number seven. At number six, it's the Houston Texans. The Houston Texans are a team that just don't, don't have any weaknesses, really. That defense is playing really good. The offense, even without the leading receiver in the NFL and Nico Collins, looked awesome. They added back Joe Mixon, and with Joe Mixon in the mix, that offense is a different weapon. They have a real run game, a, a extra level outside of just C.J. Stroud, and just C.J. Stroud is great. Just C.J. Stroud keeps them almost a top-five team in football, but having Joe Mixon... Having that that running game really be a factor opens up the spacing, kind of like we were talking about with Justin Fields. This is a really, really dangerous team that can compete with anyone. Really, anyone in this top seven could be in at number one, and I wouldn't be mad about it. At number five, we have the Green Bay Packers. Jordan Love for the second straight game, four touchdown passes. That is crazy. He has been playing awesome. Romeo Dobbs comes back, scores two touchdowns. Christian Watson scores a touchdown. Their young weapons are great. That is going to be an explosive, explosive offense. And if that defense continues to play the way that they did against the Cardinals, they can destroy just about anybody. At number four, it's the Baltimore Ravens. They just continue to win football games. Derrick Henry bulldozing over everyone. Lamar Jackson looking good. We saw Mark Andrews score his first touchdown. That is what we're waiting for. We got Zay Flowers, although he didn't touch the ball in the second half. Still a great game out of him. The Ravens played great football against a great team, and I wish I could move them up, but I just can't because of the teams that are ahead of them and the way that the teams ahead of them are playing. At number three, it's the Lions. Story of the week, 47-9 to over the Cowboys. Absolutely destroyed them, embarrassed them, laughed them out of their own building on their owner's birthday. That was a crazy game. Everything was clicking. They were out there for vengeance. They were out there for vengeance. They were out there for blood. They were out there for revenge. That was a brutal, brutal way to win a football game. I love it. <laughs> that was so much fun to watch. This is a different Lions team. They are tops in the NFC, or arguably the top. We get a battle between them and the number two teams, these, the Minnesota Vikings, this week, and that should be an amazing game. Like I said, lots of great games this on this week's slate. The Vikings are at number two. On a bye, I really thought about moving the Lions up, but they lost Aiden Hutchinson, so I kept them at three. The Vikings, still undefeated. They have their first, their, their biggest test of the season. They took, they got past the Packers. They have their biggest test of the season against the Lions coming up this week. And that is my favorite game of the week. Should be a lot of fun. And at number one, should be, maybe could be controversial. And I understand if it is the Kansas City Chiefs. They're also coming off a of bye. They take on the 49ers this week. That is another one of those games that is going to be awesome on the slate. This, this Chiefs team just continues to win. Two straight Super Bowls. They're still undefeated. They find ways to win. Again, I understand if you think the Lions, the Vikings, the Ravens, the Packers, the Texans, the Niners should be over them. But still, this is a Chiefs team that I think can compete and beat just about anyone. Andre asks who I have in the Lions-Vikings game. I'm leaning towards the Vikings. My, my double check when I do these power rankings is if the team ahead of the team behind them would beat them, I keep them. And I, the Vi Vikings are one spot ahead of the Lions. I think the only reason is because they don't have Aiden Hutchinson. That that is that's that's the biggest that's the biggest reason. Uh, Andre, like you said, they're they're going to try and make a move. That's why that's that's how I assume you heard about Micah Parsons. That's how I assume you heard about Mike uh, Max Crosby uh, being traded. I don't think either of these moves are going to happen. They need to go get someone. Isaac Uku looked really good in the preseason for them out of Ole Miss and James Madison. This is a guy that I think they just need a true edge rusher. They just need to go find somebody. Uh, but without, without their defensive player of the year candidate, I don't think they beat the Vikings.
We're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, we're going to finish up Rankings Tuesday. We're going to get into our NCAA Top 25 and our Group of Five Top 5. So make sure you stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. 